So let's get started with creating our first extension project, the Web IDE extension project. The, the whole process, the, the development process has multiple steps. Uh, and I will show you all of these steps in this course. We're gonna go through this whole process. It starts by launching that Web IDE tool. Obviously we need this to do our development. And once it's launched, we're gonna create an extension project or a modification project for an existing app. Then we actually do the modifications, right? We'll, we'll change the code, we'll use a graphical editor to do that. And then ultimately we'll deploy the app to the cloud and then register the app on the Fiori Launchpad, FLP, so that other users can use that. That's the whole development process five different steps. We're going to go through all of these together. And with that said, I'd say it's time for us to log into Fiori and get started. So here we are. I'm logged into Fiori. This is my launch pad. This is what I see first when I log in. And you notice all the different apps that are available to me. Uh, you see some of them are static apps like this one, for example, this tile never changes. It has no other information on there. Other apps are dynamic apps, apps like this timesheet, for example, this number here, this 29, where it says 29 days are missing. That's a dynamic number. This will update automatically without me doing anything to it. Okay. So if I scroll down a little bit, what I want to do is I want to find an app that we can run and look at together and then decide if we want to modify it or extend it and what we want to modify with it. So if I scroll down a little bit, there's a good one right here. So for example, approve purchase orders. That's a pretty straightforward process. Um, as the name suggests, I am supposed to approve purchase orders and I can see there's two waiting in queue right there. So let's take a look at this app. I click on it. It launches the app, takes a second to load. And then right here on the left, I see the two purchase orders that I'm supposed to approve. And I can click on either one of them. And then the right side will show me the details for that purchase order. So now let's think about how we could tweak this. For example, let's say our company, we're a small company. We only have one company code. Right here, it says company code 1000. So for us, since we only have one company code, every purchase order would be assigned to company code 1000. And if that's the case, then there's really no need for us to display the company code information because it would always say 1000. So it's really redundant. So in that case, I don't want to show this field. I want to turn this off. So this will be one of the first things I want to do uh, when I tweak this app or when I extend it. I want to hide the company code field. And now let's take a look. So for example, here it says purchase order and then it gives me the purchase order number. Um, so I really want this text to not say just purchase order. I want it to say purchase order number. So I want to modify this field label. And while we're at this, if you look at the title of this screen, it says purchase order. I want to change this title too. I want it to say purchase order detail. I think that'd be more appropriate. And then finally, look at the um, approve button at the bottom here. Approve and reject. I want to change that button label, the button text to approve now. Those are some changes that we can easily make. Um, it's really four changes, right? We're going to hide the company code. We're going to change the text or the field label of the purchase order. We're going to add the, the text number at the end. We'll change the title of the app screen. And finally, we're going to change the text of this button. Makes sense, right? So, what I really need to do now is now I need to go into the app development tool, the Web IDE, and there's different ways that you can start it. I can click on this little gear icon here and I can click on the develop apps 
option and that will ultimately launch the web IDE tool or you can also launch the web IDE from your Fiori configuration cockpit. Let me flip over there. So if you're in the Fiori configuration cockpit, same thing, you can go under uh, useful tools and you can click on SAP web IDE. That will start it too. And I'll do that. I'll click on this. It takes a second for it to load. Again, you can start it from your configuration cockpit or from the Fiori launch pad, doesn't matter. You'll get to the same space. And this is the Web IDE tool. This is the home page. Look, there's a navigation pane here on the left, and we're right now we're on the home page. Um, good place to start, obviously. This is where you can create a new project, a new app development, or a new extension right here in this middle section. Or at the bottom, you could also import an app from somewhere else and then modify it. But we don't want to do that. Today, we want to create a new extension project. Um, before I click on that, let me just show you a few other things while we're at this. So we're on the home page now. If I click on the second button here, this is the development section or the workspace section. This is where we will actually do the app development. Uh, the next button here is the learning center. It's actually pretty interesting. There's some good information here. Um, might be worth spending a little bit of time here. And then ultimately at the bottom, there are some settings that you can change, but we'll accept the uh, default settings for now. So I'll go back to the home page. And again, since we don't want to create a brand new app from scratch, we want to modify or extend an existing app. That's why I click on new extension project. So I click on this and now it's asked me, what's the original application that you want to modify? So I need to, find that first and it's asking me select an application now i can select an application from my app app repository from my backend system but i don't have one connected to this demo system here so i'm in the sap cloud so i'm going to select this and it shows me a list of all the apps that are available on my cloud platform right now and notice that the names are not very user friendly all right, so if you scroll down the list, I think they could use better names, but they don't. So what I can do is I can use the search option right here. And I know I'm looking for the purchase order approval app. So I'm going to type an approval or just do approve. And it automatically selects the apps that have this string in here. So let me take a look. This one here. So if you look at the text, it says Perch Order Approve. So this is the Purchase Order Approval tile that I want to modify. So I click on that. It takes a second to load, and then I say OK. And it loads the name in here, and it gives my extension project the name automatically. And it simply adds the word extension to the end of that uh, app name. You can modify this if you want to. You can give it a more meaningful name, but it's not really necessary. I just leave it like this. And all I have to do is click next. And now it's saying I can create this extension project for you. And if you want me to, I can also open this extension project right now so that we can start working on it. Normally I would always leave that on so I can go right into that extension project and do my, make my modifications. But right now I'm gonna turn that off because I want to show you how you can get to that extension project by yourself if you ever had to. Okay, so normally I would leave it on so I can start working with that extension right away. But right now I'm turning it off so I can show you how to get to it. Click finish, takes a second to um, load this extension now. And here we are. We're in the development space, right? The second option, my workspace. And here's my one extension project. This is the one that I just created. I can open the folder and I see all the files that are part of this project. But I don't really need to do that right now. I'm gonna close all this up again. What I really need to do is I need to get into the extension pane or extensibility pane, it's called. So what I do is I make sure I click on the extension project and then I go to tools. And I click on extensibility pane. 
this will open up that workspace for me this is what uh, it would have done automatically for me so I wouldn't have to do that but I wanted to show you how to get to it so notice that it loaded the app for me automatically and I can navigate the app just like always and it, this is the live data or whatever system is connected to this uh, Fiori Launchpad this is the data that I see and one thing to note is that if you're doing this in a development system you might not have good development data there might not be any purchase orders available for you to approve them All right so let me do this I'm gonna close this extensibility pane so if you have a situation where you're in your development system there's no good data for you you can go back to tools and you can open the extensibility pane with mock data so if I do that, it brings up the same workspace, but now it uses mock data. It's not real data, right? So here are all these fake purchase orders now that it has, and I can use this mock data to really work on my app development. So it is a pretty nifty uh, trick in case that you don't have good data available. So when we look at our development process, what we've done now is we've launched the web IDE check and we've create our, created our first extension project check. So in the next video, you'll see how we will actually start doing the modification of the existing app.